Hey guys, um, just to give an update on uh, a couple things from yesterday. Uh, obviously, I'll let you know Ty Chandler did have a uh, fracture, a broken thumb. Uh, he's still consulting uh, with Tyler Uriah and some doctors on the best course of action, um, but more than likely he's going to be down um, for you know whether you know weeks, whatever it ends up being. We'll have, we'll probably uh, keep you guys posted on a potential uh, roster move, or you know if we think he can be back in a, in an amount of time that. Uh, allows us to, uh, you know, roll with roll with him on, you know, the roster for the short term. We'll go ahead and do that. Uh, Caleb's doing really well. Uh, he is in the protocol, and and obviously with, uh, you know, player health and safety being paramount, um, we'll uh, go through the proper procedures there and just make sure everything checks out uh, before you know he's back in potential contact uh, role or situations there. Um, and then just an update for you, Lewis Seen back in the building today was awesome to see him uh, down with our guys in the training room. He's in great spirits. He looks great. Uh, cannot say enough once again just about the care he received, but uh, ultimately just uh, a tip of the cap to our medical team, medical staff uh, that stayed back with him. And then obviously the transition to get him back here uh, in our building um, was uh, was big time. It was great to see him. So he'll uh, he'll continue his early early uh, you know post procedure kind of progression here before he kind of leads into some of the more active uh, treatment and recovery there uh, that will hopefully lead to him making a full recovery. Uh, in regards to the game yesterday, very excited that uh, uh, we're able to come back to U.S. Bank Stadium and get another divisional win. Um, we we set out on a track, you know, talking as a team in training camp about how important these first three home opportunities were, all being in the division. Um, crowd's been phenomenal. Our home crowd's been a real edge for us uh, throughout these uh, three games, three games at home. And uh, we definitely continue to look forward to getting to play in front of them. I thought Kirk Cousins played a very, very good football game, led our offense. There was a lot of really Really good performances across the board on offense, and then obviously a very big play there defensively with the strip sack that then led into um, obviously giving up a, a completion there on uh, that that play. But Cam Dantzler never uh, never stop and never uh, not finishing getting the ball out there to end the game, and then being the situational master that he is, getting down and allowing us to take the knee to uh, seal the victory. So across the board, um, a lot of things we can get better at. Our guys are in meetings right now, you know, making sure that we get the most out of that film and continue our uh, evolution as a football team to be in what we ultimately want to be, uh, chasing that consistency. But proud of our guys, um, where we're at, mentally tough football team that uh, can overcome a lot to win football games, but also uh, now having chased down a lead uh, in the fourth quarter of the last three games. That's something that uh, should bode well for us in the future. Thanks, Kevin. We'll start with Chris and then Joe. Chris, let's do one to start so everybody gets a turn, okay? There you go. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, just um, I know you touched upon it yesterday, but just talk about all the situational work you guys have done in the two minute drill, how how it's paying off these last three games, and then also the fact that you probably would rather not these games be coming down to the wire like they are, and you hope to put teams away. Yeah, Chris, we uh, we definitely wish we weren't um, getting so many reps at uh, the situational master side of things, but we put a huge emphasis on it from day one. Um, something we talk about every single week, uh, different situations that not only come up for our football team, but uh, for everybody else around the league that can be real learning ops for our team. Uh, just so when those moments come up, uh, there's very little thinking uh, that goes into it and more reacting and playing. Uh, and hopefully we've given our guys, uh, uh, you know, plays and, and schematics that allow them to just play in those moments and be at their best uh, when it's required. So. Uh, we'll continue to try to hunt for that consistency to hopefully avoid some of those situations. But I will say this league, uh, you're, you're seeing it week in and week out around the league, um, the, the parity that exists and the amount of uh, the, the razor thin margin of error on plays that can either go for big gains or uh, for either side or potentially, you know, negative plays is normally very slim. So we just got to make sure our attention to detail is great. 
Um, anytime we can have all 11 doing their jobs and, and putting our guys in good positions to be successful, uh, I do think that you know our, our team is headed in the right direction. Uh, yes, uh, Kevin, you talked a little bit yesterday about uh, about the offense being experienced in those fourth quarter situations. Uh, is it a mindset that they had that they were going to go for a touchdown instead of a field goal on that seven minute drive? Is that part of that maturity uh, that you're talking about? Because a, foot, uh, a field goal would have put up my head. Yeah, Joe, I think just in that moment, just with that amount of time, I think there was nine, a little little over nine minutes left. Uh, you know, the time and, and the clock really wasn't uh, our enemy as much as just stacking a lot of plays together. And although the, you know, the way the game kind of played out and the transition defensively, the, the Bears started shifting to a little bit more of a, a split safety, kind of keep everything in front mentality. That's where I think Kirk did a great job, uh, you know, managing that situation, throwing completions, converting third downs uh, was a huge part of our success yesterday, staying on the field on those longer drives. Uh, and then our ability to mix in some runs there and knowing that it was just still normal offense with an urgency to try to finish with with points. And once we got down into field goal range, um, there was no hesitation on my part to make sure we stayed aggressive and, and tried to get down in the low red. We had a a uh, real point of emphasis of finishing those drives with touchdowns yesterday. So to get four touchdowns on our four trips down there uh, was a real positive to go along with 12 or 15 on third down. But even on, you know, some of those third downs we didn't, uh, you know, we didn't get, we were able to put ourselves from a first and 20 situation into a fourth and four and, and draw a penalty there uh, with JJ, you know, inside running kind of the, the vertical seam there from the inside. Uh, Kirk being aggressive in that mindset of, of knowing what we were hunting and, and going to try to make a play and, and really us being able to draw that penalty, keep keep our chances, although it didn't end with points on that drive. Uh, just our ability to sustain plays and our guys executing. I thought uh, the, the guys up front had a really good day, uh, just handling a lot of different things up front, movement-wise, different fronts, you know, different ways to defend our scheme that we're seeing week in and week out. Uh, the guys are doing a great job. Garrett Bradbury running the show in the middle there. And then Kirk at the line of scrimmage, just doing a lot of good things, getting us in and out of plays, making sure that uh, we kind of hold up with our premier, premier mentality that we want to have. And, and we're able to build these plays and package a lot of things because our guys can handle it. Um, and it definitely helps when you go on a seven play or seven minute, you know, 18, 19 play drive there to go win the game or at least give yourselves a, a chance for the defense to go end it. Um, was a big time thing for our team. Ben and then Alec. Yeah, Kevin, you, you mentioned a little bit there, but it seemed like Kirk uh, had quite a bit of latitude at the line of scrimmage yesterday and used a hard count quite a bit. I, I guess kind of a two-part question. How do you kind of decide how much control a quarterback has of the line of scrimmage in your scheme and, and how does he kind of put that or know when to put it to use? Yeah, he's got a clear, you know, clear cut. Um, kind of criteria we call them um, based upon a lot of different factors Ben from from whether you're looking at front structure to potential pressure to uh, maybe different pass concepts the 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 possibilities once you've established your system are really uh, based upon what we think is best for our team each and every week and it changes each and every week um, a lot of those times that you're speaking about we were in kind of a no huddle mode uh, where we're just able to activate things based upon what Kirk's seeing up there and ultimately my trust level in him to, uh, you know, make great decisions, our communication being great throughout the game, and then ultimately him just being an extension of uh, myself and our coaching staff out there is what allows all that to go. So uh, there's a lot to playing quarterback in our offense that kind of goes beyond just, you know, throwing and catching sometimes and um, I think Kirk's done a great job of, of handling that week in and week out. And we've been able to kind of grow uh, more and more in our guys' comfort level with how we want to play, how we want to be in attack mode, and and then just kind of be in and out of different tempos based upon what we see as uh, the right way to play that particular drive, uh, where, we're at, where we are in the game, and then ultimately trying to stay aggressive no matter what uh, and, and continually putting our guys in situations that have success. Hey, Kevin, um, you mentioned the O-line and Garrett Bradbury just now, but thinking about the work that Chris Cooper has done with that group as a whole, yeah. what has impressed you most about um, just that those their relationship with him and what they've done in that room? 
I think it's a great point. I, I, they, the chemistry of that room, I think a lot of times the quarterback room gets a lot of, you know, gets a lot of uh, attention as far as the dynamic of a quarterback room. And, and I do think it's really important having really been, you know, that's how I came up in this league as a player was just as a, you know, uh, another guy in the quarterback room trying to help any way, shape or form I could. Um, but the old line room is pretty similar. Those five guys, uh, that are constantly spending time around each other. Uh, Coop's built a dynamic in that room where there's a lot of dialogue. There's a lot of communication back and forth from him and Justin Riscotti and, and those players so that uh, they have a, a really good understanding of the why behind what we're doing. And then ultimately that allows them to put out some problems without always needing, you know, the, the sideline, having to come over and talk about things. They've got uh, some reps logged together now, and especially with a rookie right guard, I, I feel great about where Ed's at. And one of the reasons why I do feel great about where Ed's at is he's got Brian O'Neill and Garrett Bradbury next to him. And then I think Ezra had a really solid day yesterday and uh, Christian Darisaw getting a game ball for uh, having a really tough matchup and Robert Quinn and, and really showing up and, and attacking that and, and competing all day long. So uh, performances like that from those guys up front, uh, it's what we're looking for, and and I've been really happy with what with, with what Chris Cooper's done with that room, and then how that the leadership in that room with guys like Brian and Garrett, uh, amongst a lot of guys in there um, that have really pushed that group, and they practice hard, they practice well, they don't they don't take a day off or a rep off. You know, they understand how important their preparation is to help them. You know, go have those uh, performances on Sunday that they've had, and. We'll I do think uh, we're doing a lot of really good things and, and there's a lot of places that uh, I could be better for the group and then there's some things we can correct and fix so that uh, our consistency continues to grow. Lindsay and Matthew. Hey coach, yeah, I know that um, every game is equally important and that there's, you know, a lot left to go of the season, but just what is kind of the mentality right now and, and how much confidence does it add to the group just that you are sitting at four and one and especially that you've been able to be all three division teams at home so far. Yeah, it's always easier, you know, to build off of victories and make no mistake about it. You know, we've made it hard on ourselves at times just because of some of the inconsistency that showed up, you know, maybe in the second or third quarters of games, uh, but without any flinch in our group to go win the game when we need to. And I think that's a big thing. Uh, obviously getting off to a fast start yesterday, three straight touchdown drives to start the game um, was important for our team. But then across the board, I think understanding, hey, we've got this lead, nothing needs to change. Let's just keep playing, treating each each and every snap as its own entity and and making sure uh, when we can have all 11 executing, I know it sounds like you guys hear that a lot from me, but uh, those first three drives yesterday are really indicative of what that really looks like. And us giving our guys um, a clear, a clear, concise plan that they can just go play. And then as the, the as inevitably happens in every game, if you have success, how defenses are going to change the way you're playing, uh, they're playing your scheme and, and what you're doing that particular Sunday uh, and how we can evolve and change in real time and try to be one step ahead when we can. And and that's where we'll continue to try to be better and, and good for our guys and, and them ultimately getting the credit for making these things come to life on Sunday and, and finding ways to win football games. Hey, Kevin. Um, earlier in uh, training camp, you had mentioned an emphasis on wanting to develop players, and you have a number of guys who are developing in new positions or rookies like Ed. I guess I was wondering, in the middle of a season, how do you continue to emphasize development, or is that not as possible because of the game planning and everything else that's, uh, that's going on? No, Matt, it's a huge thing because I think when you can – mix game plans and trying to get very detailed in what you're doing. And sometimes that development can get away from you a little bit. Uh, that's one of the reasons we have a big staff. Uh, guys feel like uh, from those assistant position coaches to, uh, you know, our, our sports performance staff, we want to make sure that these guys never waste a moment in this building. And that's everybody on our roster. That's everybody on our practice squad. Um, we've got clear cut developmental plans for, uh, players that we're going to rely on here in the short term to guys that we really see being long term uh, fits for us. And and the urgency levels the same for both 
uh, both groups of players because you just never know when your number is going to be called upon and and when you got to step in there and, and help us win a football game. So uh, the urgency is there, uh, post-practice <laughs> post practice work, um, extra meetings, uh, using all the resources that we have uh, in our great building here to make sure that we're constantly focusing on uh, the game plans and the focus on, on winning and, and beating the opponent that uh, we're challenged to play against every week, but also understanding that uh, there's another layer of that development that's always taking place um, as a team, as a position group, uh, and and on an individual basis with each and every player on our roster, I think it's really, really important. And it's something that Kwesi and I stress to our staffs every single day in this building. But it's a great question. It's something we've got to make sure we're uh, staying on top of because uh, it, it will matter over the course of 17 games. We've already seen um, how guys can step in and, and potentially help us in, in certain roles. And that's in really every phase. That's offense, defense, and special teams. Last three Thank questions. You. We'll go. We'll go. Kevin, Will, and then Don. Uh, Kevin, I wanted to ask you about Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison. Uh, most of the time that they've been here together, they've sort of been considered interchangeable running backs. But it looks like you guys are trying to carve out, um, you know, some type of something specific for each of them. I don't know if I'm overseeing that or not, but you know, whether it's specific roles for them. I'm just wondering in what ways you see their skills kind of complementing each other as opposed to being just replicating each other. I think that's the beauty of it, Kevin. I think that they do complement each other with how they play and their impact on our offense. But at the same time, their impact on the game can be very similar. You know, I think Dalvin had a great game yesterday. He was explosive in the run game, uh, had a, you know, real impact in the pass game. And then uh, no greater example of kind of that interchangeable feel than third and eight down there on that last drive for Alexander, you know, to, to catch that ball. Uh, Kirk, you know, being real decisive, you know, putting it in the place where he was kind of turning Alexander upfield and ends up being a, you know, 12 or 13, whatever it ended up being yard gain there on a critical third down that gives us a chance for points because, uh, you know, being smart with the ball, knowing we're in field goal range right there, but also being able to put the ball in play to our running backs in that situation, knowing how great they are with the ball in their hands gives us a real option to not only convert that third down, uh, but get down inside the five to to really activate a lot of scoring type of plays. Uh, but I think you'll see it week in and week out. Uh, we we don't really define it. I think it's the the flow of the game. Sometimes, uh, you know, I can make it hard on our guys because you know I don't always tell people when we're going to go no huddle, go fast. And uh, Coach Modkins is trying to make sure he's uh, getting both those guys in the flow of the game. But at the same time. Um, you know, we see some spots to maybe go fast and it and, and it can allow a guy like Dalvin to get two or three carries in a row and really turn some yardage out. And then and then here comes fr a fresh Alexander uh, to, to just continue that momentum on that drive. Uh, they're both really good in pass protection. They're both really good as pass catchers out of the backfield. So that's a real luxury that we have that we're going to continue to kind of build upon, um, knowing that those guys are real focal points of our offense. Hey, Kevin, I know you have a lot of uh, confidence in, in Greg, but with him missing, I believe, four 50-plus yarders in a row, I think one of them got blocked. Um, and kind of the field position part of the equation there, do you think you need to adjust anything when you get into that area of the field at all? I think it's just all based upon the game, Will. I think it's, you know, I can do a better job of, of maybe playing the field position game at times uh, or possibly going forward on some of those fourth downs like we did a little bit later on in the game. Um, every situation is just kind of a feel thing based upon where we're at in the game, uh, the success of our offense. Uh, my confidence in Greg will not waver. Um, I expect him when he goes out there to make those kicks, and I'm going to continue to give him opportunities because uh, you just never know when that three points uh, can be a difference maker like it was in London for us or at, any, at other times during the season. So um, I'll, uh, we'd love to give him some more uh, chip shot type of uh, field goals for him. Uh, those tend to come for, uh, you know, on the extra points with how the season has gone. It's either it's felt like it's either been a 50 yarder or an extra point that he's kicking. Um, but uh, I think we can uh, make each decision based upon what we think is best for not only, you know, getting points in that moment, but how important his field position and and ultimately how we can maybe help the defense out uh, by capitalizing on some field position or is it better to go get those points in that moment? So. I think uh, it's easy to kind of look back after the fact and 
and and say, hey, we missed it, or uh, the kick gets blocked, and 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 you know now you're uh, putting maximum stress. But that's the that's the complimentary nature. Complimentary in my mind doesn't always mean it's just, hey, we scored a touchdown and now we can give the defense a lead to play. Sometimes the defense uh, has to step up and, and get a stop off of a, a missed field goal and, and get us the ball back. And uh, then special teams has to do a great job when called upon to play the field position game. They've got to execute and, and be great in those moments. And that to me uh, gives us a, a, tr a true nature of feeling like we can be in attack mode, uh, in any way we really feel like during a game. But ultimately, I'm going to keep on just trying to make the best decisions that I think in the moment. Uh, I don't always think that uh, I'm right in, in absolutely all those decisions, but I do just go with my gut and feeling, uh, A, having a ton of confidence in our kicker, uh, but also a lot of confidence uh, in those, uh, you know, in our defense to go out there and, hey, go get a stop for us, and, and maybe that'll be a huge momentum swing for us in that moment as well. Last one, Don. Uh, Kevin, so you said a lot at the beginning of the year that you wanted to earn the players' confidence when it came to play calling. And uh, just the feedback that we received the past couple of games, you know, especially last game where you had the Kirk to JJ to Dalvin, you know, you had the Jalen Rager run, you had the Kirk sneak, that they, they feel re-energized because they're not even sure what's coming. Um, how do you feel about your play calling, especially now that they have the confidence that no matter what you call, whether you tell them to go up tempo or whatever, that they're they're going to do it because it might be their number called and and they're into it. What, what's your what's your take on your play calling and how they're reacting to that? Well, I think they know by now it's it's going to be predicated on you know the looks that we're getting. What I think gives us the most. Uh, chances for success and then ultimately trying to keep the defense off balance and and not ever being one dimensional either way Don and I hope they know at least uh, I think there was one play yesterday JJ might have asked me where I pulled that one out of um, but outside of that one I would hope they know what's coming and, and we've done a good job preparing them for how we think the game is going to play out but ultimately uh, I think that's what makes our offense special and where we're going uh, with this group is, you know, we can morph into a lot of different kinds of offenses while still staying true uh, to who we are and what we want to be from a philo philosophical standpoint. And, uh, you know, that's where I can continue to be uh, better for our guys, you know, throughout four quarters of football of, of making sure we stay a step ahead, but also making sure our guys are comfortable with what we're doing and, uh, five weeks into this offense with this group, I'm really excited about where we're at, but also where where we could potentially take this thing as well. And, and on that sneak uh, specifically, uh, Adam said he was surprised that it was Kirk. Do you give Kirk that latitude that he's going to be the one keeping it, or is that a call that you've made or something you can't share? <laughs> um yeah, the, the, he had some options on the play uh, mm -hmm. based upon the look that we got. Uh, that's that's something that, uh, like I said, I give Kirk all the credit in the world in that moment for for making a great decision and and ultimately you know the other ten guys being able to execute uh, no matter how the play ended up playing out um, to get us in the end zone. So um, there's going to be a lot of situations like that sometimes in short yardage, sometimes in normal football um, where uh, we we want to provide our guys with. Uh, kind of the keys that they need to to make good decisions. And, and when Kirk's playing the way he did yesterday, there's a, there's a lot of offense we can get to at any point in time, situationally, uh, normal downs, um, trying to potentially drive the football, possess the football, or uh, other times we're going to get more chances for some explosives down the field and, and things will play out week in and week out possibly differently, but all staying true to who we want to be offensively for sure.